welcome you all uh, you know, to the ACCA Strategic Business Leader Orientation today, what we really want to take on. Uh, you know, and of course, I want that to be an output from this session is that you should be able to appreciate as to what you are really signing off from the strategic business leader exam standpoint. You should know in terms of, you know, how the, uh, what exactly the strategic business leader exam is and what exactly you need to know from the standpoint of doing well in this exam. So that's the intent and that's what I intend to cover. So what I intend to cover, as I said, is to take you through uh, the strategic business leader as an exam as to what uh, may come your way when you would sit for an exam. I just want to give you a quick glance of the syllabus areas of the strategic business leader. And of course, um, take you through uh, as to what you should be knowing from the examination standpoint. That's the intent. And I think that would be the right uh, kickstart for you to really prepare for an exam. Many of you who already have my sessions and you are already looking on to that, you will be able to appreciate in terms of you know what I'll be talking today in terms of one, the coverage and two, the, the steps that I would want you to take to, re to really excel in this exam. So, you know, be with me and we'll, we'll certainly circle back in terms of, you know, what is there in your mind towards the end, wherein I really want you to be open up or, or get open in terms of asking any concerns, queries or questions that you may have. So without wasting any time, let me just share my screen with you and do let me know when you're able to see my screen. Uh, can you can you see my screen? Just wanted a sense check on that. Can somebody please confirm if you can see my screen? Yes, sort of visible. All right, thank you. Uh, thanks for that. So we'll start off with you know what we have in the agenda today. You know some of the ground rules that I want all of you to really really adhere to because this is something I I always want uh, to happen in all of my session is that your mobile phones should not be bothering you uh, as much as possible. If possible, make them on, on the, uh, and make them go on a silent mode, or if not, if you cannot switch off, then that's fine, but at least make them, you know, going off on the switch off, you know, switch off mode. I would really appreciate if you can switch on your cameras. I want the session to be a video based session, not in uh, not a video recorded session, which I'm, you know, which I've been doing day in and day out, wherein I come on camera, I talk on and I go on. I want this to be a live face-to-face -face interaction. And uh, I would really appreciate if you all can switch on your cameras, at least I can see you, you can see me and we can talk having, uh, having knowing each other as much as possible. Uh, open up guys, open up to talk in terms of, uh, you know, that will help me understand the problem that you have. And of course that would help you gauge what you really need to know from the examination standpoint. So talk more, understand more, make it as interactive as possible. And I think that that's something uh, we really want to be achieving up, you know, towards the end of the session. Make the best of any session, you know, we're going to have. There are many that may come your way as we go forward. In addition to the sessions that I've already provided you, there will be various chats that we will do together, including the mock exam. And of course, the reward that you would get on the mock exam, wherein I would tell you personally where you're going wrong so that you can really correct on that and really work on that. But, you know, just make the best out of it, make the time for it. And of course, be here with me, not on the WhatsApp, not on the Facebooks of the world, at least for coming 45 to 60 minutes. All right, guys, going further, you know, what we intend to cover in this session, I just tried giving you some, some synopsis of it. We'll talk on the, some of the questions that I think you may have. Let's try finding out the answers for that. I, I do have some questions in my mind, which I think students have been asking me all along and, you know, or at various occasions. So I've tried jotting that down and, you know, I'm, I hope those questions will resonate with you. We'll talk on that. We'll certainly try uh, uh, deep diving into the SBL exam structure and the content as to what this exam is really all about and what you really need to know from the structuring and the content and the syllabus area standpoint, we'll, we'll try doing that. I really want to take you through the SBL marking scheme today in terms of how the examiner has been marking this exam, just to give you a heads up that this is what is being marked and how you should be thinking of from getting the maximum mark standpoint is something that we'll really talk on. And we will also talk on, on the syllabus area. So, you know, all the syllabus areas are being covered over here in terms of, you know, what is there in the strategic business leader exam. We really want to give you a synopsis or a heads up in terms of, you know, what those syllabus areas are. We'll talk on that. 
towards the end, we'll also talk on you know the study plan. You know, I'm I'm trying working out the study plan for the for the September 2022 to of course June 23 examination. Um, you know, there is a study plan that is being prepared week by study plan, day by study plan, giving you as to what you should be doing on the daily basis. That will come your way, and of course. To get that, you can reach out to Fintram and I have, I'll, I'll give the details towards the end as to who to reach out and of course ask that. So that's again something to be to be spoken about. And towards the end, we'll talk on the Q&A in terms of, you know, me on, you know, understanding as to any concerns, queries, or, you know, things that you may have in your mind, which you really want to offload on to me and, you know, I can pick it up and of course give you the best resolution for the same. Does that sound like a plan, guys? Yes, sir. All right. Some of the questions that I think you may have, and you know, these are this is not an exhaustive list per se, but you know, I do think that many of the students really have that in their mind. So I just tried, you know, pointing a few things down. How will I go forward with the lectures that Fintram has provided? What should be the plan? Is the time enough? We do, we do, we don't have only like 60 days, 90 days, you know, depending upon when you're giving your exam. You know, you may have that question in your mind. Let me tell you upfront that you know, we would be giving you a study plan in terms of you know, how one should be really taking off these sessions. Ideal, ideal way of, of uh, approaching this exam is that you should at least have 90 days with you, if not more. 90 days is something that I personally feel is required in order to cover the, 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 the syllabus area that you may have your way. And of course, to do justice to each and every component of the syllabus areas. That's what I personally feel. And you know, as I said, you would get a plan in terms of you know six. How can you prepare that in six to eight weeks? Which of course, you know, once you have done the sessions, you need some time to practice and you know revise, give your mock, and then appear for the exam. In totality, ninety days is something that you look forward to, and that's what you know you should be aspiring for. Is the material lectures that have been provided by Fintram is enough for the strategic business leader standpoint? Let me just go and say that upfront and make that very clear. Absolutely enough, my friend. You do not have to refer anything and anything elsewhere. The material that we provide, you know, is has been created, curated, um, has been crafted and drafted in a way that should give you the best of the content available in the market, best of the content available for you to really excel in this exam. And that's some, something that that our team has really curated, keeping anything and everything that is available in the market in mind. And of course, we are being we have we have been inspired by all of the materials that are already there. So you don't have to refer anywhere else for that matter. Is the material lectures updated? Absolutely, yes. You know, the lectures that you've got, they have been updated. There is no confusion in that. If there is anything that may come your way, you know, in terms of, you know, what we may feel that needs to be get, you know, needs to be getting updated. If ACC has come back with something, we would certainly come back to you and of course update you with all of those requirements. But as far as the lectures are concerned, as far as the syllabus area of September 2022 to June 2023 is concerned. Anything and everything that you need is there in those lectures. All right. Do I need to refer any book? As I said, nope. There is no need to refer any book from the strategic business leader standpoint. Anything and everything that you've got in the form of lectures, in the form of content is absolutely enough. You don't have to refer anything on that. Do I need to practice more questions in addition to what Fintran has provided in the lectures and in the revision bootcamp? Personally speaking, I think what we have covered is more than enough. But you know, there is always an urge to practice more questions. So I never stop on that. I do not want to stop anybody on that. But I would say, if you really want to practice more questions, practice few more exam questions. While I can tell you, you know, the way FinTram really operates, we have already taken all the exams into consideration. We have crafted our revision bootcamp accordingly, wherein we practice the concept questions, the comprehensive questions, and the past examination questions too. And many of the past exam questions I take on in the mock exams too, in terms of you know you you really answering that and I really telling you as to where you're going wrong. But if you really want to practice more, practice few more exam questions. Not many of them would be left, but you know a couple of them would you know can can be there that you may need practice on. And just go and practice that. Do not, do not practice any exam kit that's not required after the Fintrans material. If in doubt where to go, you know, if you have the doubt, I'm sure you would not have it. But if you still have it, I'm there for you. You know, you have my WhatsApp number, you have my email ID, and of course, you can reach out to me as much as possible, and we'll be happy to answer you and guide you in terms of you know what you may need to do from the examination standpoint. Is the mock exam important? And if yes, when should I give my mock? 
uh, you generally try conducting the mock, you know, at least 15 to 10 days prior to your exam. And that's something super, super, super important. And I can't stress the importance of that. Do not, do not miss on that. We certainly want you to, you know, appear for the mock. And I keep saying that, like the broken record and those who have, who have seen my sessions and are seeing my sessions, they would know that practicing by their own hand is something I really, really push on in any exam and every exam and any session that I do. Do practice things by your own hand. That's the super important thing. Will you get a review of your performance in the mock exam? Absolutely. And the review that you would get would be a very detailed one. So I personally, personally see the exam papers of the students and I review them. I tell them this is what you, they are missing on and so on and so forth. They would certainly get a detailed email you know, on, on each and every component where they're going wrong so that they can really understand and assist themselves in terms of how can they really improve on and work on in the best possible way. Does that help guys? I hope these were some of the questions that you may have. Again, you know, you may have more, you may have less, but I just tried pointing on things that, that I get off and on basis in the, you know, from the students. I tried killing that right away at the start of the session itself. And so that we can jump on and deep dive into the content that is coming your way. Is that clear guys? Yes, sir. Alrighty guys. Coming on to the SBL exam structure. As far as the SBL exam structure is concerned, you know, there, there cannot be, <clears throat> there cannot be any exam, you know, or any performance in any exam unless and until you've understood the structure of that exam in terms of, you know, what you really need to do, how much time you have, how can you plan, how can you write and so on and so forth. And that's something you really need to know. SBL exam is a four hour exam. It's not an first three, three hour exam kind of thing, which we are used to give. It's a four hour exam, which is huge in terms of, you know, the number of hours that it has. And of course, the content that you really need to do, because in this exam, you effectively have to spend 45 to 60 minutes in terms of reading the question, because question is that long and is that large that it requires that much amount of time in terms of, you know, understanding that, assimilating that information, and of course, uh, preparing yourself for answering that in the best possible way. So that's something you should certainly be ready with. And that's something that we really do. And of course, some of the sessions that you may see in the division bootcamp that you've got, those sessions will be like three, three and a half hour, four hour long kind of a session, wherein I practice the whole question, giving you all the tips and tricks that you need in order to handle this exam in the best possible way. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Moving on to the exam content in terms of, you know, what is the content of the strategic business leader exam? Strategic business leader exam is the one integrated case study. And you could certainly, certainly see that by referring to any of the exam. They'll give you one case study that may have several issues that you would need to deal with when you would sit over there. So they may give you a case study of an organization. Now that organization can be some can be from, from, a, from any specific industry. Let, let's say hotel industry, let's say transport industry, aircraft industry, uh, gymnasium that can be anything and everything. And on I mean, off late, they have been asking, you know, and they did ask two times the question on the not-for-profit organizations and so on and so forth. So they can put you in a very different situation in the exam. And then they would give you a case study on that in terms of, you know, things that are happening in that, in that organization in different, different scenarios. They may be acquiring something. They may be selling off something. They're exposed to some risk. They're exposed to some change that is being brought on. They're exposed to some kind of research that is going on and so on and so forth. And you have to deal with that in the, in the manner as if you're part of that organization. Generally, it is 10 to 15 pages long and can be more, it can be less. Eight to 12 questions to be answered and all are mandatory. This is something very important. There are no choices in the strategic business leader exam. Anything and everything that you may get to see there, you have to answer that. They may give you board minutes, spreadsheets, annual reports, surveys, proposal, and so on and so forth, emails and workings and so on and so forth that you may need to really go over there, digest over there, understand that, and then give back the examiner what exactly he may is looking at. So effectively, you really need to be aware of all of these, um, I would say formats, because at times he'll not only give you the format as an annual report or a spreadsheet or a survey, but he also wants you to prepare. He may want you to prepare a report, uh, may want you to prepare a press release, may want to, you know, you to prepare an email, uh, or a memo and so on and so forth, you have to have to be ready with it. 
And again, you know, this is something that I have been saying all along in all my sessions. I'm sure, you know, those who have already seen that, they would really appreciate this, that in this, in this exam, you have to wear the hat of the role that is being provided to you. You may be a CEO, CFO, head of the function, audit manager, external consultant, et cetera, et cetera, in the scenario that you really need to manage, wear the hat of that particular person and then answer the question, just, just stepping into the shoe of the position that is being given to you. And that's what we have practiced in the sessions. That's what we have practiced when we really handled the revision bootcamp, wherein we have dealt with comprehensive and the past exam questions. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Now, coming on to the SVL exam marking scheme. Now, this is something you should surely, surely not miss on. That in this exam, there are 20% of the marks. So effectively, 20 marks of this exam is being is being given in terms of how you really write this exam. What does that mean, sir? Effectively, what you really need to write carries only 80% of the marks, 80 marks. So it's like the content that is to be written would only give you 80% of the marks. But how you would write that in terms of demonstrating certain professional skills. So there are five professional skills over here that you really need to demonstrate. If how you demonstrate those professional skills in terms of writing this exam would give you 20 marks. So effectively, you don't have to write for 20 marks, but how you write would give you 20 marks in this exam. And that's something very different from any exam, any exam that you would have seen by now. And that's something you should not be missing on. We have covered at length, my friend, these professional skills. I do have a slide that will tell you in brief as to what those professional skills are. But we have captured this in detail in our sessions, in our revision bootcamp, and we practice that also while doing the questions. And as I said, I'm sure the folks have already given the exam. They would, they would know in terms of how much stress we put on in terms of really going through these things in detail. 80 marks for technical skills, which is for writing, and 20 marks for professional skills. Professional skills are like five. It's called CKs, you know, just a mnemonic that I've given, where you have to demonstrate the communication, commercial acumen, analysis, skepticism and evaluation. There are five professional skills that are needed to be demonstrated in this exam. That gives you 20 marks in terms of how you really write that. Do not, do not miss on that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Moving on, my friend, you have this syllabus area in front of you and syllabus area runs from A to J. Now, this is the recent syllabus area that, that we have picked up. And of course, you have you would have seen in, in, in your, in your uh, uh, sessions also, we have leadership, governance, strategy, risk, technology, organization control, financial planning, the change management, the professional skills, the employability and digital skills. Professional skills is something we have captured separately in terms of covering those five professional skills. And, you know, that is, you know, uh, a syllabus area per se. And then last but not least is the employability and digital skills, which is nothing but the computer based exam in terms of how you would handle that in the exam. So this exam is a computer-based exam. There is nothing that you would write by your own hand. You have to just go on the computer screen and start typing. So effectively, examiner wants you to, to get into the scenario wherein you would work in an organization and you have to draft an email, craft a report, and so on and so forth. So he wants you to do that on the system. And that is the reason it's a CBE exam, computer-based exam. And that's what we train you on. We do have specific sessions from the strategic business leader standpoint that we have given you as part of your curriculum that you need to go through that will train you in terms of how do you handle these this computer based exam and what are the new man, uh, modalities or or nuances that you really need to play on with when you will sit in the exam and and handle that in the computer based environment so i've discussed that i've given you a session specifically on that do go through that and do not do not miss on it if I really have to go through and give you a glance of the syllabus areas, you know, from A to H, you know, the first, the foremost chapter is, is, is talking on the leadership, wherein we'll be, you know, going and deep diving on to the understanding what the leader is and, you know, understanding what a leader should be doing uh, in an organization, how he should be really understanding the culture of an organization, what kind of ethics that he needs to demonstrate and of course how one should be dealing with with the fraud bribery and corruption kind of issues in an organization whole and soul you know the examiner really wants you to be the right leader for an organization and that's what he's aspiring for that is the reason the content itself is so so relevant from the industry standpoint that they really want you to know as to what the leader should be demonstrating 
as the qualities of leader. Coming next, we have the governance. So once you have done the leadership traits in terms of, in terms of knowing as to what the leader is, you have to step into, uh, into the regulators mode and, and try and understanding how you would be managing the corporate from the governance standpoint. So you'd be learning the corporate governance aspect. You'll be knowing the committees that are there, the reporting that you really need to do from the overall governance standpoint. And of course, what you the, the leadership role is, what the director's role is, the board of directors role is, what the committee's role is, is something that you really need to understand and appreciate and examine a heavily test you on that because we really want you to understand that this is how the organization would work and this is what you really need to appreciate. And of course, come back to the examiner telling them that this is where things are going wrong. Coming up next is the strategy. Now he wants you to be the strategic business leader. So how can strategy not be part of the syllabus area? It certainly, certainly has to be the part of syllabus area. And that's that's where examiner always, always tests you all. He always gives you one and at times two and at times three questions from this topic because he really wants you to understand how are you really understanding the overall strategy of an organization? How are you really knowing the strategic choices that are available to you? How are you really making those choices, right choices for an organization? And while making that, are you doing the analysis that is needed both from the internal and external standpoint, the capability analysis standpoint as to understanding your own internal capabilities and capabilities that you really need to acquire of. And then towards the end, how are you implementing that strategy to ensure that you get the desired results? Very, very, very important. As I said, you would at times get almost 40 marks from the syllabus area. Very, very, very important. That is the reason we have covered this at length, my friend, in our sessions, wherein we have covered this not only from the theoretical standpoint, but with the various, various practical example standpoint, be it the Googles of the world, be it the Indigos of the world, be it the Microsoft of the world, be it the Enrons of the world, and so on and so forth. We have discussed so many things in our sessions just to give you a perspective as to how one should be thinking about the right strategy. When we have spoken on the Yahoo.coms of the world, we have really you know, spoken on in terms of, you know, why they failed, the way they failed. And when we are so, you know, spoken on the Googles of the world, we really talked on, you know, how the strategy really worked for them. So, you know, watch out for that. Very, very, very important from the, from the examination standpoint. Moving on, guys, we will be talking on the rest. Now, you cannot be the good strategic business leader of any organization unless you know in terms of how you really identify the risk, how you really assess the risk that you're that you're really having over there. How are you really thinking of managing it? And of course, mitigating it. And that's what is being covered in the syllabus area. We will talk on anything and everything that you are exposed to when you're part of an organization. We will also talk on the technology and the data analytics. Now, this is something that has already been, you know, that has always been my favorite because the way things are changing nowadays, you watching out me, right sitting at your home and maybe some of the folks might be sitting out in their pub or in their gym or wherever you're saying this session and you know you're going through you know what i'm del delivering over here is a function of you know having the right technology in place and that's where you know examiner also expects you to be ready with in terms of thinking through how technology can impact the business so you really need to know how the technology and the data analytics and the tools are really really helping and supporting the business and of course impacting the business so you knowing and understanding that and appreciating that and of course really taking the control from the IT standpoint system control standpoint security standpoint and the new changes that are coming in the economy which is like you know you're getting onto the big data side data analytics side you know he may give you a situation any number of situation in the exam wherein you would get exposed to these areas exposed to these, these issues and you may have to implement that or comment on right implementation of it now, the more you will understand these, these technologies, then only you can really do the justice to what the situation really warrants there and what should be the right course of action there. And that's what is needed. That's what examiner expects. And that's what you really need to demonstrate in the exam. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. And of course, we'll be covering the organization control and audit, which is more like the erstwhile audit and control that we have really done. Um, you have to have to be knowing in terms of you know what the internal controls for an organization are, what the audit of an organization is all about, the kind of reporting, kind of compliances, what you really need to deal with when you would become the leader of an organization. 
we'll also talk on some of the com uh, i would say common things but common sensical things if i may say that that you may need to do from the analysis standpoint we'll talk on the ratio analysis forecasting the decision trees of the world the basic calculations that you will need to do in order to really contemplate and understand the the analysis in the in the best possible way we'll be talking on this more of more of a basic finance kind of a thing but we'll just give you a refresher in terms of you know what you really need to know from the strategic business leader standpoint so that you're ready readily available or readily prepared in terms of handling those scenarios when you're acquiring an organization or when you're selling an organization or when you're really thinking of a decision of getting into a particular geography what kind of financial analysis that you need to have is something that you really need to be prepared for we'll also talk on the success and the change management not disruptions that are really happening the excellence that you really need to have some of the project management issues again something very 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 heavily tested in the exam the change management that you really need to deal with in terms of you standing in organization being a strategic business leader how would you change the way organization is really operating how do you really manage that change how do you really implement that change to ensure that you get the desired results is something that is being covered in this in the syllabus area so if you really see in terms of you know what examiner has really curated as a syllabus area for the strategic business leader exam. I'm sure now you can really correlate to the fact that he really wants you to be uh, prepared from the organizational standpoint so that you can be there and start contributing from day one. And that is the reason strategic business leader exam is very well taken up and is very much appreciated across the organization, across the industry, because they know what you're really going through in this curriculum is something that they need in anybody and everybody that they hire. That is the reason this exam is a super important exam for you to really do well in any, any company you really join in. Then comes the you know, professional skills, my friend. As I said, there are five professional skills that we'll be covering. I mean, I've just tried giving you the glance of it. We'll be covering the communication, commercial acumen, analysis, professional skepticism, and evaluation as a professional skill, wherein you know, you have, you'll be going through in terms of, you know, how one should be expressing yourself clearly and convincingly in communication, how one should be having an awareness of the external environment, internal environment, and of course, in the wider business sense, when you'll be doing the commercial acumen, how one should be really doing the overall analysis and investigation when you're implementing the analysis as a professional skill, how you would not take things on the face value and have the cautioning mindset, in the professional skepticism and how you would evaluate or assess an information that is available to you when you are really thinking of the evaluation as the professional skill over there. We have gone through these things in detail, in depth, my friend, in our sessions. And of course, in the revision bootcamp, we have practiced that not only on the concept and the comprehensive questions, but also on the past exam questions, giving you the live life scenario as to how examiner has really asked that so that you can answer that in the best possible way is that clear guys yes sir now you know the last syllabus area which is employability and digital skills as i said this is more like you know handling the cv exam so in, you know you really need to have the understanding of the computer technologies the kind of options the op the the functionalities that are available in the exam, how to navigate that, how to really assess that, and, and of course, um, use that in the best possible way in terms of answering your exam. And that's where we train you on this in terms of how you really handle that CB exam so that you are not new to that kind of a culture and you're able to handle your exam in the best possible way. All right, now this takes me to uh, to a place wherein I really want to tell you in terms of, you know, what our course really offers. If you really go through, you know, the, the SPL course that, that you have or that you already have in terms of the content that it has, you've, you've got the detailed video lectures that are there with you. And that covers all the syllabus area that I just mentioned, giving you not only the theoretical piece of, of, of things that you really need to know, but also the practical bent of mind that you need to have, because we have covered various, various industry level examples, just to give the content and context in terms of how industry has been really operating on with. And guess what? All this comes with the unlimited views. You can see our sessions any number of times. There is no restriction on that. 
In addition to that, you would also get the comprehensive study material, which you can download and print. And guess what? This is something that I was talking on. You do not need anything more than this. If you have this material, anything and everything that you need from the standpoint of clearing this exam is available with you. We would also give you the revision boot camp, my friend, that would revise the concept while doing the questions. You would get the video question marathon in this, wherein you would get to see that. And I personally think video question marathon is nothing but the but the video exam kit. So, you know, we guys are used to exam kit. What Fintram has done is that we have created a video exam kit for you, wherein we have taken up the pool of the questions, the concept, comprehensive and past exam questions, and we have solved that for you. Faculty solves it for you. I solved that for you in terms of giving you all the tips and tricks that you need in terms of handling that, that question in the best way possible in the exam. And that's something that has been readily provided to you. And you can just go through those videos and understand as to how you would be handling that in the exam. And of course, practice, practice by your own hand after that. And I'm sure you'll be home in terms of, you know, you really going well in the exam. Then we also provide you the computer-based exam training, my friend, as I said, and of course, the related guidelines in terms of you really knowing as to what the computer-based exam is all about. You would also get, my friend, the 24 cross 7 tutor support in terms of you knowing me and, of course, connected, getting connected with me on the email, Telegram, and WhatsApp. You can certainly reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer any concerns, any queries that you may have. And towards the end, we'll give you the mock exam, you know, which comes with the individual performance review. Once you'll answer the mock exam, you'll get a detailed report in terms of, you know, how you're really doing things and where things are really going wrong and how to really, really work on to that. So that is something to be looked upon once you've given your mock exam. And last but not the least is that if you take on, of course, our six months course, you also get the FinTram exam pass assurance, which, which I really feel proud for saying this because we really, really feel confident in terms of our content and our delivery, that we really feel that you should certainly clear the exam. But in case, God forbid, for any bad reason for which you're not able to clear the exam, Fintram is, is absolutely, absolutely happy to sponsor your lectures for the next, next attempt, very next attempt, if, if God forbid that thing kind of a thing happens with you. All right, guys. Now, just to give you some sense on your study plan and approach to preparation, I think we've spoken enough in terms of what you would get. The ideal start of your study plan would be that you should start seeing the lectures as much as possible and practice the class question syllabus area wise. That's something that we always push on. And you would see, you know, my, in my lectures also, I say the same thing that you should start practicing the question, you know, along with me by your own hand, go through the professional skills in entirety. There are some specific lectures that, are, that I've given you on the professional skills, go through them as much as possible and in the entire manner. Do not leave anything, anything untouched. Understand the formats. Formats are super important thing in the exam. You know, understanding the memos, understanding the report, understanding the emails, understanding the, uh, the press releases. You know, all these formats are very much prevalent in this exam. The more you understand that, and we've covered all of these formats in our sessions, in our revision bootcamp, when we are practicing also live, you have to have to go through that. You also have to acquire the reading and writing skills, my friend. You know, reading this exam as in the question paper itself in 45 to 60 minutes of time is not easy. So we have to practice that. We have to know in terms of, you know, how you would be preparing yourself for writing in this exam. That is something we have very well taken off when we have talked on the reading skills and the writing skills, giving you the time frame that you really need to spend on that. Do go through those sessions as many times as possible. And towards the end, you know, I complete, and I and I come. I have been saying this like a broken record that you must watch the revision bootcamp or the video question marathon at least at least twice. This video exam kit can certainly certainly make wonders in this exam. You have to have to go through this at least at least twice. Practice at least two exam questions by your own hand. I keep I keep saying that because the more you practice. That will give you an essence in terms of you know how you have to handle that in the exam. And towards the end, give a mock exam and see in terms of you know what your performance has been we'll be happy to contribute to you in terms of you know how things uh, can be improved on and where you're going wrong on that all right guys and once you've done that and you're given the exam and of course you come up with the flying colors you certainly have to promise me for treating me with the cup of coffee and that's what my real real incentive is and i really want to have cup of coffee with you once you've cleared the exam and of course, come up with the flying plank colors. Now, that's what I really wanted to cover today, my friend, giving you an insight as to what the, the overall, I would say, 
uh, syllabus area or the content of the strategic business leader exam is all about. I've given you my details over here. You can certainly reach out to you know the number that I've given, the website details that I've given. I've also given my personal WhatsApp number over here and my email also over here. You can reach out to me for any concerns, queries that you may have or anything that you may want a guidance on. We'll be happy to help you. And in case you have not taken the sessions and thinking about it, you can reach out to Fintram. You can reach out to 888 You can WhatsApp them. You can call them. And they'll be happy to make you get the sessions as soon as possible. Now, that's what I wanted to cover, my friend. I am open to any concerns, any queries, any questions anyone may have before I really wrap up this call. Good evening, sir. One. Good evening. Uh, sir, I just had one question. So, uh, how are you like, uh, how do you expect us to like go to the revision bootcamp? Like, do you want us to cover a syllabus area, the videos for the syllabus area, and then go to the revision bootcamp for that area? Or like, should we cover all the lectures separately first and then go to the revision? No, all this. So, may I know your good name, please? Uh, this is Shivangi, sir. All right. Hi, Shivangi. So, Shivangi, uh, just go through all the sessions first. Do not jump on to Revision Bootcamp because Revision Bootcamp is the mixture of various concepts and topics. So, first, you should be completing all of the syllabus areas. And once that is being done, because syllabus areas also have various questions in between in terms of you getting the feeler as to how that area can be tested on the, in the exam. Once you have done that, then move on to Revision Bootcamp because then you would be able to appreciate that what is coming from where. So do not jump on on the revision bootcamp, you know, from the day one. Once you have done the syllabus areas, then jump on to it. Does that help, Shivangi? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so Vijay says, uh, how many hours of studying per day is required in order to ace the exam if you're starting from today? So Vijay, when are you expecting to give this exam? In September or in December? September, sir. September. So if you're planning to give in September, we're standing on 3rd of Ju July. So effectively, you have July and August with you. And so effectively, you have like 60 and not even 60 days available with you. I'm not counting the days in the, in the, in the September. So, you know, uh, pardon me for that. So let's say you have 60 days. If I really go backward in terms of, you know, how much time you really need to spend, if you really have to clear this exam in the best possible way, I think at least five to six hours is something that you should be spending on on daily basis without any miss in order to be there from the overall overall exam standpoint. Nothing less than that. At times, it, you may want to spend more time because some of the topics may take more time, but six hours a day is something that you're reasonably spending on. Nothing less than that. Does that help, Vijay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other questions, guys? I'm happy to take on, happy to chat on. You know, anything that you may have in your mind, just pick it up. Sir, you know, let's kill it there and then. Sir, like SBR, we have to, if you're reading a question, means uh, suppose we take an SBR, uh, the question will have several sub requirements in that, uh, suppose financial instruments and revenue, some other topics are there. So if we read that particular, uh, 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 sorry, Paragraph itself, it's enough to answer that one, sir. So in SBL, do we need to re read the whole question and then answer the requirements? Or we read the requirements and then I read the required uh, paragraphs and then answer, sir? Vijay, it's a very valid question. Let me tell you that. And thanks for asking that. You know, SBL and SBR are two different species on this earth. Let me tell you this. There is no similarity in terms of how you would answer that in the exam when you compare this with the strategic business reporting. SBR, every question is a different question dealing with a different scenario. And that scenario is 10, 12, 13, 14 lines kind of a scenario. You read it, you understand it, you assimilate it, you answer it. But that's not going to be the same in strategic business leader because over here, anything can come your way that can relate to the one exhibit, two exhibit, at time three exhibits. So you have to read out the question carefully and then start preparing yourself to answer that. And that's something we have covered at length in our sessions. And I'm sure when you'll watch it, you'll get to know because we have covered the reading skills in terms of how one should be reading, how one should be really correlating one exhibit to the other, the overall question to the exhibit, and how you would start preparing yourself for an answer in the writing skills. So we have spoken on the reading skills, we've spoken on writing skills and giving you a pathway in terms of how one should be addressing the question 
and preparing yourself with an answer when it is linked to one exhibit, two exhibit, three exhibit. So we do so, and you know, we we called it, uh, you know, this philosophy to be the raft P uh, philosophy in in the FinTrams language. What I have given, you know, is the you know uh, that you should be understanding the role that is being given to you, the audience that is being given, you know, that 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 you're really responding to. You have to understand the task that is that, that is there in that question. You'll be able to correlate different exhibit. You'll be able to correlate and understand the format that is being given and then give back the examiner the professional skill that is needed in that answer and then start crafting that. All of that is very well and taken, taken care and, and of course discussed at length in our sessions. Just go through that. Revision Bootcamp specifically covers you know, the practice of questions also taking that philosophy at the back of your mind that can help you in terms of excelling this exam in the best possible way. So do not, do not miss on that. But to answer your question, it will be, you know, it will be, um, there, there cannot be one, uh, one is to one ratio kind of a thing in SPL. You have to read the entire scenario and then start writing the, the answers. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Wongi says, do you offer SBR support? Yes, Wongi, you know, uh, uh, I teach SBL and SBR both. So you can also, uh, you know, look out for my SBR sessions and, uh, you know, we'll be more than happy to help you over there. If you need a demo session for SBR, you can reach out to the number that I've provided you. They will give you the SBL and SBR demo sessions also in case you're thinking about uh, and, and, you know, for the enrollment. Nihal says, I would like to write SBL and SBR in September session. What is your opinion on it, sir? Nihal, it it is a function of how much you are prepared at this point in time. And if I have to ask you uh, from the SBL and SBR standpoint, have you completed some course to some extent till now? Or you are starting SBL and SBR from the scratch right now? Can you respond, Nihal? You have completed nine papers till now in ACC. Good enough, Nihal. I'm talking about SBL and SBR. How much of SBL and SBR you have covered by now? We are 60 days away from the exam. Have you covered anything on SBL and SBR till now? Or you are starting it just right now? Okay, so Nihal, you say, you're say you saying that you have not covered anything till now. So you're starting off now. SBL and SBR both. So if in that if that is the case, Nihal, I'm sorry, you know, for for being uh, uh, demotivating here, but I do not think that one should be taking up SBL and SBR in 60 days of time. It's unfair um, uh, for for anybody to really pick up and start thinking that they would clear both the exam preparing for them in 60 days. They two are very different species. So I would I would humbly request do not pick both of them. Pick one of it, whatever you may like, pick one of them and kill it in September and take the other one for December. Do not, do not be over, uh, be overconfident for any and whatsoever reason, uh, Nihal. That's not going to be helping you. Uh, sir, one more question. Yes, please. Uh, uh, sir, I was looking at the memory chart book that we have and it's like very extensive and it's very nice and I want to download that, but I can see that um, we, we won't be able to do that. So is there any way I could get that so that I can, I can print it or something? Because it's like a very, like it's like you can, you can see, look at it and you can remember it. So I just wanted to like print it and paste it somewhere. <laughs> so is, is that possible? Unfortunately, uh, Shivangi, you know, our policy is that, you know, memory chart are only viewable. You can view it on your laptop. You can view it on your, uh, on your mobile also, you know, and that is the reason we have given it on both of it. Uh, so that you can review it anytime possible. But, uh, you know, downloading and printing of memory chart is not possible as of now. That's against the, the policy of Intram, so won't be able to help you on that. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you. But I can tell you one thing, and that's coming from the core of my heart. Shivangi, memory chart is, is something that, you know, when it came to my mind that I have to create something like this, it took me six months to create these memory charts. Trust me, it, it took us six months to create these memory charts. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a product from my heart in terms of, you know, what I've created for you guys to take the benefit from. And it really sticks on in the mind when you really go from, you know, you know one place to the other, going through and revising the content. 
do not do not undermine the benefit of it please go through at least twice or thrice i'm sure that those will be like super helpful to you yes sir definitely mm -hmm. all right wongi says would you recommend one to study sbr and triple a sitting for december exam absolutely yes wongi i loved that question sbr and triple a has many similarities and if you're preparing for december exam and you're starting it right now sbr and triple a can be a deadly combination it can be a deadly combination because you know both of them complement each other and both of them have various similarities and one should really be targeting that in the best possible way and and i can tell you you know not you know while you have not asked that but i'm telling you in a similar way strategic business leader and apm also have various similarities and many of the times when when student really comes and ask me that you know which subject they should be taking on uh when they're thinking about taking two subjects together i always tell them take sbl and apm and take sbr and triple a together because the both of them as an sbl and S and apm and sbr and triple a have various similarities and that can really help you reduce your time frame in terms of preparing for this exam and to that you know uh, nihal you mentioned sb l and sbr together the right combination would be sbr and triple a together and sbl and apm together that will save you know good amount of time that you that would you would be spending on thanks thanks wongi thanks nihal guys anyone else have any questions before we really wrap up we had, sir yes sir go ahead Sir, in uh, Kaplan study textbook, sir, there was a last question. They will be giving one question, full case study based question, sir. In that uh, first part was like BCG analysis, and then the second one was there was a group discussion, board of directors uh, discussion, and then there was internal control uh, question, sir. So the exhibit there are several exhibits, sir. So when I came to uh, that board of directors discussion, it was a lengthy one, sir. So So if if we say for first forty five minutes you have to read the question, sir. So when I again come to when answering that question, sir, I felt like I I didn't know I don't remember anything, sir. And <laughs> I'm not surprised with that, uh, Vijay. You know that's very that's very common, and that's that is why you know I was saying that you know you having the right uh, reading skills and the right writing skill is super important this exam, and that would only happen once you'll start practicing questions by your own hand. And you're no you're not wrong on that. and that's what we have done in our revision boot camp just go through that my friend you know and, and you know i will not jump on to conclusion right away like this you know every exhibit every question every exam a question that you would see has this kind of a modality and the more you'll understand the writing and the reading skill that i was just talking about when you were asking the question earlier that would help you in terms of answering that and the right way of approaching that would be you know just go through the revision boot camp that would help you in terms of you know what you really need to know and one thing i can tell you and there is no offense with kaplan or bpp but one thing that i always say to anyone and everyone in sbl is that please do not do not refer books for sbl for sbl anything and everything that you need to look on is the past exam questions the questions that are given in kaplan and bpp are somewhat not of that you know again you know i am saying it basis my my understanding no offense to any organization or any publisher but they are not of that level the way the exam for acc really comes up you know your way so if you really have to target exam in the rightful manner just attempt the past exam questions of of acc rather than any book uh you know and that's what i believe in and that's what even i have done when i'm preparing the revision boot camp and preparing you there so just see the revision boot camp and if there is any need practice one or two questions more um from the from the past exams of acc and just go there is no need referring any book there yes sir thank you sir <clears throat> thank you anybody else guys anything All right, Wangi says thank you, sir, for the session. It was very informative. Thank you, Wangi, for joining in. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Guys, last call out. Do you have any questions before we really wrap up? 
all right guys if there is nothing then then we will just wrap it up you have the details over here on the slide you know they, that has the detail of intram and of course that has the detail of my whatsapp number also in case you have any concerns any queries you know happy to help if you want to register number is being given over there call them whatsapp them and they'll be happy to help you i'll see you again my friend in the next one till then this pankaj singra signing off mm -hmm.